Many people have the misconception that Tesla's cars learn to drive as you drive them. Nothing could be further from the truth. The cars may be able to adapt and memorize features about the drives they do consistently, but that's a memory thing, not a learning thing. The true genius behind Tesla's full self-driving cars is the massive computers on site that crunch through literally billions of miles of driving data using machine learning via neural networks to, in essence, learn to drive over and over again. While the computer facilities at Tesla are already world leading, the new Dojo supercomputer will be the best driver training computer ever built, and possibly the fastest computer ever built too. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. If you enjoy the video, definitely make sure you give it a like, and please do subscribe if you enjoy it so you can see more of these. In fact, actually, I'm just crossing 1,000 subscribers right now. I promised I would do a 1,000 subscriber giveaway, but this video is gonna be plenty long without it, so <laughs> we're gonna push that back till the next video. But So subscribe definitely if you wanna get some free stuff, because I'll be doing a giveaway starting with the next video. So to clarify my introductory statement about learning, Tesla's autos process data at a massive scale on their inference chips, the ones that Tesla has custom built for them. That's why they need such amazing computer on board and why you know Tesla had to develop their own chipset that can process around 100 neural network tasks and thousands of images per second. So basically it's running real time in a very, very complex model. But this is a model. This is not the actual training that's going on. The chips on board the cars process a model that is downloaded to them from the, you know, from Tesla's headquarters. And that's the over the air updates that people are getting all the time. And with the new full self-driving beta, that of course is a whole new set and Tesla is training those as well at home, right? <laughs> at Tesla's headquarters and then shipping them out to people over the air, which is why your car doesn't get better like all the time. It actually incrementally gets better with each of the over the air updates. So I thought it was important to point that out because I think some people have the misconception that the cars themselves are learning. That's not true at all. They are doing a lot of work. It's really cool what they're doing, but the massive, massive computational resources that are required to learn is very much more than a car could handle. <laughs> If you happen to have seen my earlier videos, you might have caught one about the Apollo guidance computer. I'll just link it up here. But it, it's a guidance computer, and what happened was it did a lot of the work in the 1960s on Apollo, but it was a little baby computer, and all of the big stuff was being done back at home with the mainframes that were running at the time. So it's kind of like that. Your car is like the AGC. It's like a little baby computer that's running, of course, billions and billions of times faster. Tens of billions of years in the far future. Um, but it's not doing the real, real heavy lifting. That's being done back on site at Tesla. Also, just FYI, if you check up here, you can see I've got some playlists on Tesla and SpaceX and also on artificial intelligence. I've got a ton of videos on this already, but in this video, I really wanted to focus on Dojo. It took me a long time to get all of this information because Tesla is being, you know, fairly secretive about this. This is something that it's like their own trade secrets and they don't really want to give it away. So I've had to dig around quite a bit to try to find this information. I will link a whole bunch of sources in the description down below just to make sure that you know I'm not pulling these things out of my butt. <laughs> but I have had to make inferences about things, and so I may not be 100% correct because, of course, I don't work for Tesla. If I did, I wouldn't even be able to talk about this to you. So what is Dojo? It's a new supercomputer that Tesla is in the process of building. They've been working on it for several years, apparently. The whole goal is to accelerate the speed of training and the accuracy of the training by a factor of at least 10 or possibly more. So first of all, what's in a name? Well, a dojo, as many people probably know, is a training hall for martial artists. That's where my icon came from. I hope you like it. <laughs> it's a lot of work creating those icons, so hopefully this was a good one. Anyway, in Japanese, do is the way and jo is the place. And so it's the place of the way in Japanese. Or, you know, a better translation in English might be like the training place or something. So, you know, it's a great name, first of all, because it's the training place. And it's also kind of a practice place. It's not the real world. So it's, you know, it's a training place. It's a practice place. And of course, also many, many hackers over the years have talked about their Kung Fu or their Karate as their code. So it's also got some hacking cred. So I think it's a fantastic name. What a great job they did with that. So just in the name, they win. 
What is the timing of Dojo? Well, Elon Musk and uh, Andre Karpathy, who's the head of AI at Tesla, said that it's coming to, out in the middle of 2021. I think there's a little bit of caveats about that, and I'm going to talk about that later. Um, it could be Elon time. Of course, it could take longer. He said that they're hiring engineers like crazy right now to make it happen, and that not just the chipsets, but also the cooling and the power are major hurdles. So there's a lot of stuff still to overcome because they really are trying to build, like, if not the fastest super computer on the planet, one of the fastest supercomputers. And that's, you know, when you're pushing the boundaries that much, you've got a whole bunch of things that you have to deal with besides the obvious stuff. So how fast will Dojo be? Well, Elon Musk says it's going to beat out an exaflop. And that is, I'll put it across the bottom. I think it's a 10 with 18 zeros behind it. It's a, you get a, a, a petaflop and then a thousand petaflops is an exaflop. And the current best computer, which is the Fugaku computer in Japan by Fuji is I believe right around 450 petaflops. So, but again, there's some caveats to that because it's dealing with numbers in a different way. It's very complicated at this range. <laughs> I've tried to simplify this down. I can definitely do other episodes getting into more of this nitty gritty, but just anyway. So it's really, really fast. It'd be about twice as fast as the Fugaku computer, but it works at a different bit rate. So what does that bit rate mean? Well, the Dojo works at 32 bits. So the length of each byte is 32 bits. You can also, of course, do 64 bits, which most computers run at these days. Um, and you get more accuracy with the 64 bits, but at the cost of speed. And I believe the Fugaku is either running at 64 or 128 bits. You can <laughs> let me know if you happen to know in the, in the comments. But anyway, it's running at a higher bit rate. And so it, even though it's slower, it's actually faster, it's very confusing, but there's a reason why Tesla is going with 32 bits, which is that it is enough precision for what they're doing. It doesn't have to be perfect precision. The, the importance is speed much more than precision in this case. What is Dojo going to be made out of? Well, this is about as clear as mud. I had to dig around a long time, but it looks like Tesla is going to be creating their own chipset just like they did for their cars, right? They've got the inference engine on the cars, which has become quite a big deal. But it looks like they're building another chipset that is specifically designed for the Dojo computer. It may already be done. Again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but so they're building it out. And uh, I, one reason why is that they're the two biggest suppliers of GPUs and TPUs, which are tensor processing units, are um, NVIDIA and Google, respectively. And Tesla is not <laughs> in a really good relationship with either of them. So it makes sense that they would want to do something like build their own in that case. Of course, this is extremely hard to do. But, you know, that's Tesla. <laughs> so the idea would be that they would design their own chips and then they would have Samsung build them in Korea and then ship them to them. So they would have their own custom designed chips. The good part about this is it makes them extremely specialized and designed exactly for what they need it to do and, and really nothing else. So it's all speed, it's all exactly what they need to do, and that's pretty cool. Plus, of course, it cuts NVIDIA out, and they used to partner with NVIDIA on both in the cars and also the current supercomputer that they're running is NVIDIA GPU-based. So I can see why, you know, given the fact that Tesla and NVIDIA really are not getting along, <laughs> Tesla would want to cut them out. It also goes along with Tesla's strategy of just continually vertically integrating. I mean, make your own chips, make your own computer, do all this stuff, right? They're stacking everything up so that they control as much as possible. So what type of chip is this new custom chip going to be? I think it appears to be that it's going to be an NPU. So <laughs> there's there's four kinds of chips, like main, you know, central processing chips. There's the CPU, which is the central processing unit, which is the old school computer chip. There is the GPU, which is the graphics processing unit, which is the NVIDIA specialty. specialty. Of course, that's used for games. It's also used for rendering, and it's used for a lot of neural network training these days. Then there are TPUs, which are tensor processing units, which is Google's big specialty. Um, since they're the ones who produce the primary TPUs, I can see why Tesla doesn't want to use them because they're competing with Waymo. And then there, finally, the kind of newest kit on the block is an NPU, which is a neural processing unit. And it appears that Tesla is going to be specifically building a neural processing unit. So what are NPUs? Again, I can do a whole separate video on this, but I'm gonna give a really, really nutshell version of that right now. If you're interested, please let me know in the comments and I'll actually do an ep episode on what is an NPU and a TPU, etc. But basically it's, a, it's a, a chip that's designed specifically to do high level, high dimensional matrix math, which is essentially all that neural networks are, is just tons and tons of matrices that are being manipulated constantly and the weights are changing, etc., etc. So Andre Karpathy has talked about how these will be specialized for sparse matrices, which is actually 
actually critical. What are sparse matrices? Sparse matrices are matrices that are, think about like woods. <laughs> a sparse woods has very few trees. A sparse matrix has very few entries that are not zero or things that are really, really close to zero. These are kind of gotcha situations and it's complex to explain exactly why, but it's difficult to manipulate sparse matrices without very, very careful algorithms and especially like working with specialized hardware to help that out to make the calculations go quickly and to make them go accurately. So it's complex, but basically if you think about it in driving, like the neural network behind it, what's generally going on is most of the values in the matrices or in the tensors that are involved with training have values that either are close to zero or zero, or on the other hand, are not changing very much. So the differential between one frame and the next or one tensor and the next is is very close to zero. So they are effectively sparse matrices and with clever algorithms and clever hardware and stuff, you can really, really crunch those numbers a lot faster than you might think you're able to. So again, the short version of this story is that an NPU, especially this one that's being designed, is being designed very specifically for training driver data, which tends to be sparse matrices and therefore it's going to be screaming fast. So now we get to the good stuff. Why does this matter? So currently the best estimation is it takes the NVIDIA GPU based, you know, giant supercomputer farm thing that they have at Tesla about 72 or I think it's set. Yeah, 70,000 hours of GPU time to complete one training model. Right. So in, with the number of GPUs that they have, it takes them about 72 hours or three days to do in real time. That is a really long time to do training of a new model. Every new model requires three days of fully committed you know, processing to, in order to do that. So that's very long. If they screw up, it's another three days, right? So it's, it's a very long time. So the factor of 10 decrease or increase in power reduces the time to about seven and a half hours or so. So then you could actually do like three training sessions in a day, as opposed to one training session per three days. In addition, I expect that they're also going to be able to train on larger data sets and more data at a time. And obviously with Tesla getting billions, I think they've got 3.3 billion miles or so of recorded real world data at this point. And of course, you know, <laughs> it's coming in faster and faster every day with the more and more cars they have driving. And now of course the full self driving to beta, which is going around, they have to train on that as well. So it's just a massive amount of data they have to process. And so the faster they can do it with all of this stuff, the better. So the ability for Dojo to deal with more data and do it more quickly means that now Tesla can train video rather than single frames at a time. And this is what Elon means when he talks about 4D training rather than the current 2.5D training. Only like the massive speed and throughput of Dojo plus a radical rewrite of the software really enables this at a reasonable rate. If you think about it, what they've done is they've now gone from single frames that are individual and having to correlate them and have people do that to having eight cameras all sort of stitched together into one giant image and not just an image, but a video sequence. And it's training on that. That is pretty incredible. And here's another thing that actually could be even more important. The new algorithms and the new hardware are going to allow them to do what's called unsupervised learning. What that means is that as opposed to human beings having to label individual frames of data or draw blocks or say this is a stop sign, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is incredibly tedious. It's a sucky job. It takes a lot of time and it costs a lot of money. The computers are going to be able to do this themselves or Dojo is going to be able to do it itself. So it's able to label things. It's also able to immediately pull in edge cases where a human being took over the wheel and something happened. Or if it was in shadow mode and in shadow mode, it was like, oh, that didn't work right because I predicted go right and it went left or something right. So it's able to pull those edge cases immediately and look at them, which allows it to bootstrap train much more efficiently. So all of this combined means that there is going to be a jump in capabilities at a scale that's really hard to comprehend right now. <laughs> it's, it's kind of mind blowing to think about how much faster and more efficient they're going to be at training this. Now, as to timing of the release of Dojo, I think it's really possible that the full self-driving beta release coincided with parts of Dojo going online. Um, Musk talked about Dojo being available in six to eight weeks back in August. Which, first of all, how cool is that, that they might actually allow us normal, you know, mortal human beings to be able to use their stuff to train? That's super cool. But if you think about that, what does that mean? The full self-driving beta is just coming out. It's about in that six to eight week. It's actually a little bit more than that time frame. 
And what it probably means is that Dojo is actually coming online in pieces, right? They may have a piece of it done. They may have another piece of it coming online soon. And they're expecting to roll out the final, you know, super version uh, by next summer. But they have pieces of it running now. And it could mean that all of the training and all of the new updates that are coming out for full self-driving to beta are actually intimately tied to Dojo and actually are able to run because of, because of Dojo. They're able to learn this stuff because of that. In which case, if that's the case, how cool would that be? People who are driving those new betas and getting the new releases are actually getting pieces of the Dojo you know, training stuff coming to them. And I think that's like super cool that you're getting to be like right there on the bleeding edge. All right, I know this was a little bit of a dense episode, but I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. I think Dojo in some ways is the most important thing that Tesla is doing right now. If they want to nail this autonomous driving thing, they have to get a computer that can do the training in an efficient manner. And I think that's what they're doing. So. I also wanted to say thank you like really, really humbly to all the thousand plus subscribers that have now subscribed. I, I am going to do the, the subscription giveaway in the next episode, but I, I mean, I'm kind of blown away and I'm very humbled by the fact. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. And as always, please do feel free to ask me questions in the comments or also at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time. Bye bye.